Hi there, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a little more of a challenging video for me to do, so just bear with me. For those of you who don't know, Meg, uh, she has a channel, Megzy Recovery. I started watching her YouTube channel, probably was the first like YouTube channel I ever started watching, but it was right after my recent relapse with my eating disorder and she has documented her journey with recovery and I just really connected with her and her thoughts and everything she was saying and there'd be sometimes she would say something and I'd be like oh somebody else thinks that too I'm not weird like I didn't feel alone and she really made me not feel alone and I don't know her personally she's on a whole different continent she doesn't know me for sure Definitely, I'm very heartbroken for someone I've never met and I don't know personally at all. So for those of you who don't know, I've never watched her channel, she, you know, is during her channel, she got married and she got pregnant. And I just, I was just overjoyed when I heard that she was pregnant and she shared that on her channel. And she posted a while ago about how... In fact, I had to read it several times before it really sank in and I believed it. On her Instagram, she shared that they lost their little baby boy. Definitely my own experiences have made it so my heart goes out to them. I can understand and have a lot of compassion. I'm not going through their journey, but I've been through my own losses that I wanted to share a little bit more about because I'm just sitting here thinking, I feel so helpless. You know, you feel bad for someone, you were heartbroken for them, don't even know her, but I just feel so helpless. I'm like, what could I do? And I just decided that the one thing that I could do is share a little bit about my experience, but with the hopes that I can share what helped and what did not help when other people were trying to support us and during our losses. So I'm hoping that I can maybe help others know how to support. And before I had gone through any of these losses, I said things that I now realize that probably were not helpful in the realm of support. And so don't feel bad if I bring up something that is maybe hard for somebody who's going through a loss of a child to hear, it's okay, we, we do what we know and we can't do what we don't know, which is why I really wanna share and let some of you guys know who are willing to listen how it can, how you can be the best support. Everyone's gonna be different in what they need, but this is just from my own experience. So really, really wonderful, thoughtful, kind people said some things to us that weren't really weren't helpful and made things even harder for us and made us kind of shut down and isolate and as a result we're actually starting to process some of our losses even now 12 years later but it, again we it's just it is what it is it's, we just don't know sometimes so I just wanted to share well first of all my situation we had four miscarriages other really big loss that we had was um, we had identical twins and they were born prematurely. They were born really early and one of them survived and one of them did not survive. This is going to be hard. I'm staring. I'm, I'll show you what I'm staring at. I brought a couple. I just kind of I was thinking about this video, I was kind of thinking about some things and I, one of the things that I dug out and I don't quite get this out very often, but when I do, I really, this is precious to me. I, the, in the NICU, the, they have this organization that they make quilts and every baby in the NICU gets a quilt and then you get to take it home. So it, I have three quilts, well, from our babies. Um, 
from Hudson, our youngest, who was born prematurely, and then our identical twins, Mason and then Noah, who was the one who did not survive. He passed away. So this was his quilt, and I don't think, like on the inside, it's so sweet. Lullaby quilt, it has this little tag, it says lullaby quilts. Love and comfort, and it shows like the name of the person who made it, where they are from, and um, and when it was made, and it just, I mean, this is just so, it's just so sweet, and I just, I, when I do get it out, I often will hold it, because I feel like, I just, I don't, I don't, I can't hold my own baby anymore, like, I went in pregnant with two babies, I went out with, well, after the NICU, I went out with one, um, I think I'm going to start with like what is helpful it's actually not that that difficult it doesn't have to be complicated really just be there just be there for them whoever needs support with the loss of a child you don't have to come up with a lot of words listen to them hear what they want to need to say want to say ask them how they're doing and really truly listen and just you know just be there it doesn't have to be complicated if you don't know what to say, just say, I am so sorry. And I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say, but I'm sorry. That is so helpful. That is so supportive. And that actually goes a long way. That's really a good place to start if you don't quite know what to say. I also wanna share that if you are sharing words of support, however you are, texting, phone calls, whatever it is, and you're not getting responses, just know that they are heard. There were times that I would get messages and I didn't even have the space to read those messages. There were times that I had the space to read those messages, maybe even from a couple weeks before, but I didn't have the space, mental energy, emotions to actually respond. But they are so appreciative. I felt I didn't feel alone. And there were times that it felt good to communicate and go back and forth between responses so, or phone calls, whatever it was. So just know that if you're giving support and give it without expectations because this is somebody's journey and it's going to be theirs and it's so nice to be supported and not feel alone. And it's also nice to, if you need your space to have your space and be able to really engage in that support if and when it's possible. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about like some things that was really hard for us to hear. Well, at least, don't say at least. At least you have each other. At least you have a great life. At least you can try again. Just make sure you're in the moment of where their grief is. And what we got a lot was, at least you have one of the twins. The fact that we were grieving one twin had nothing to do with the fact that we were celebrating the life of another twin. And they are separate. So you can be grateful and be grieving at the same time. Don't try to fix things. You don't have to fix things. That makes it worse. Don't try to fix things and try to change the subject, make it light. You don't have to fix it. It's, you can't fix it, but you can be there. You can support, you can make things better through support. Meg, I don't know you. You don't know me. I, you'll probably never see this video, but even if you just somehow run across it 10 years from now, I just want to share this and just know that you're not alone and I'm thinking of you. And this is what I wrote. Meg, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing your inner thoughts. Thank you for sharing your pregnancy. Thank you for being brave and sharing your loss. You didn't have to. I have connected with your eating disorder struggles and cheered you from on from a different continent. You inspired me when I thought I could never leave my family and go to treatment. 
There were so many times I wanted to give up on recovery and you would say something that hit a nerve in a way that made my healthy voice loud enough to turn again towards recovery. I would prayed for your brand baby's bones and wanted you to have it all. I guess I saw my younger self while watching your videos. I literally ran to my husband when I watched your pregnancy announcement video and squealed, she's pregnant. He was a bit confused, but I explained. I prayed for the health of you and your baby. It was like I was punching the gut when I read your Instagram post that your precious baby boy went to heaven way too early. It is not fair. I am so sorry. You are a mom. He's your baby and will always be. I hope you now feel the freedom to grieve and mourn how you need on your own terms, in your own way. I just, you know, when we're grieving, we don't, we need to do it our own way. And I think that's where I, you know, I'm now starting to process some of this stuff later because I kind of felt like maybe I needed to get it over with or I owed people explanations. And Meg, you don't owe anyone anything. This is your journey. It's yours and Brendan's and your family's. It's your journey. The last thing I wanna read um, is just something I posted. This was a couple years ago. I posted on our twin's birthday in an Instagram post actually. And I'm hoping that maybe it'll shed some light on just the situation, how to support. This is what I wrote. I always share a picture of Mason in the NICU because it's a reminder how strong he is and how far he has come. He has survived TTTS, placenta accreta, HELP syndrome, and other health issues. I always recognize and celebrate Noah because Mason is and always will be an identical twin, and I am and always will be the mom of twins. Noah is and always will be my son. Even if I can't hold him in my arms, I hold him in my heart. It is always a bittersweet day. We should have two kids blowing out candles, two kids to buy presents for, two kids not just today, but every day, every day. I don't share this to make anyone uncomfortable or not sure what to say, because honestly, our society does not always know how to react. It's okay to be uncomfortable. We need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So what does a parent of a twinless twin or any parent who loses a child, whether it's miscarriage, pregnancy, or infant loss. What do we need and want? It's much more simple than you would think. We want our child to be acknowledged and we don't want them to be forgotten. We want to talk about our twin. It doesn't take us to a dark, sad, depressed place. It makes us feel whole since without our twin, or any pregnancy, infant, child loss. We are missing a piece of us. We don't need you to try to say something to make us feel better because we don't wanna feel better. Know that I am happy and sad today. And that's okay. We can be beyond grateful that we are blessed with our surviving twin and be sad and mourn the loss of our twin who did not survive. It's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Let's step out of our comfort zones and be comfortable with being uncomfortable together. And I wrote, again, this was their birthday. Happy birthday to my identical twin boys, Mason Jude and Noah Jude. That's all I wanna say. I don't have anything else. I just, I'm hoping that, again, I feel kind of helpless, like there's nothing I can do, but if I can't change it, I don't even, I just hope that maybe I can make sense of this enough, of what it is like to lose a child and what we might need. And also, if you want to support someone, hoping that this might allow you to not have such a barrier of reaching out and supporting someone who has lost a child or like don't be afraid do not be afraid it's needed it's wanted 